Greetings, YouTube world. This is Diet Dr. Griffin, and I'm thrilled to be back with another video. Although I'm not sure how thrilled you are that I am back with another video. This video is different than anything I've done on the channel because it is a review of a wrestling pay-per-view. Um, the pay-per-view in question is AEW's Double or Nothing 2020. Fun fact, I was actually supposed to be at this show making a fun trip to Vegas! And, you know, my corona came in and uh, changed those plans entirely. So, the show, which was supposed to be at the MGM Grand Garden Arena on May 23rd, was moved to Daly's Place in Jacksonville, Florida, and also at the Jaguars Stadium down there for one of the later matches on the show. The first match on the card is the Casino Ladder Match which basically gave the winner of the match a future world title match. There were eight competitors and the ninth competitor to be named later. Uh, one of the competitors, Ray Phoenix, hurt himself on the previous Dynamite from Wednesday, so he was replaced by Joey Janela who looks a lot like the State Buff Marshall man if he was a wrestler from New Jersey. The match had a Royal Rumble type deal where it started with the first two competitors and then every two minutes another competitor would come into the match. But the uh, casino chip, which served as the prize in the match at the top of the ladder, could be obtained at any time. And I, I found this to be particularly interesting because it didn't make sense that anyone at any time could go in and win the match before the other competitors came out. It seemed like you would want all the competitors out there and then having to compete for the prize. There were some very interesting moments because uh, Darby Allen came out and he tried to kill somebody by jumping on them with a skateboard and ended up killing himself instead. And when Orange Cassidy came out, he was asking the rules of the ladder match and then spent two minutes trying to assemble a ladder and not having any earthly idea how to do it. It was arguably the best two minutes of the match. Very, very funny stuff. And cool as hell. The mystery entrant came out last, which was the most predictable thing out there. And it was a guy named Brian Cage, who I had honestly never seen before, but apparently he was with Impact prior to this. And he looks like the Incredible Hulk. He was whooping on Luchasaurus, which is another larger fellow, and making him look like a child. Obviously, Cage went on to win the match, and that was that. I give this 3 out of 5 stars. It was a solid opening match, but it was rather predictable that the mystery entrant was going to win the match, and it was basically a bit of spot-heavy moments where everyone was kind of waiting for their turn to get in, and it kind of took the flow out of the match. The second match is a singles match with MJF versus Jungle Boy, who is actually Luke Perry's kid. 
these two put on a good clinic of a wrestling match, but in this man's opinion, it dragged on too long considering how low Perry and uh, MJF kinda are on the card. It felt like you could have had a good five minute shake off of this match and it would have been a bit better. MJF, who is a definition of the chicken shit heel, he actually won a clean match. Very kind of surprising. Uh, I give this two and a half stars out of five. The length of the match really took away from my grade on it. It just got boring and really dragged. These guys aren't long high enough on the card for me to go 20 minutes. The next match on the card is Cody versus Lance Archer for the new TNT Championship, which is basically the let's give Cody a title to compete for because he took himself out of the world title picture for some reason. Mike Tyson guest starred in this match as well. He brought out the belt and it was really odd because it was an incomplete title. <coughs> Apparently there was some issues with the My Corona and getting the belt made and the belt that they showed was kind of an incomplete title. They were very quick to note because it was kind of a weird silver over red and the only thing that looked sharp was the TNT there that was that was kind of cool but the rest of it was kind of eh not great the match itself was fun Lance Archer was really playing it up for the camera when he was beating up Cody for about 90% of the match and he was jaw jacking with some of the other wrestlers uh, who were basically making up the crowd and doing the noise throughout the entire evening. Uh, in particular, Big Swole. She, she earned MVP honors for the crowd because she was just cursing and being very vocal throughout the entire show. Arn Anderson, who is in Cody's corner, gets kicked out of the match after he uh, takes the legs out from Archer when he is on the top rope and Mike Tyson just totally snitches and uh, just says when the other referee comes out that yeah he was doing that stuff and then Jake Roberts somehow who is Archer's manager gets uh, removed as well he tries to come back with the snake but Tyson's like I'm not having any of that and he takes his shirt off and he, he looks like he's in fighting shape again. Cody then uses that opportunity to win the match with a couple of crossroads. I give this match three out of five stars. It is a good, good effort by both competitors and I particularly enjoyed Archer's playfulness with the camera. He was just very very having fun and I, I look forward to seeing what they're going to do with this championship going forward. Is it going to be a mid-card belt? Is it going to be a TV title? I would actually like to see what the belt is going to look like when it's done. The next match is Penelope Ford versus the alien Chris Statlander. And by God, is Penelope Ford a hottie? Uh, she actually wasn't going to be the original competitor in this match. Uh, Dr. Britt Baker was supposed to be the uh, opponent in this matchup. Unfortunately, she took a bad injury on Dynamite on Wednesday. And uh, there were fears that she has a torn ACL, but the doctor dude came out and just said like a bunch of other things, but didn't say torn ACL, and uh, 
the doctor is supposed to make an announcement on Wednesday how long she's going to actually be out for. But uh, by the looks of things, it seemed like it was going to be pretty serious. And hopefully the doctor will be back soon because she was really looking good prior to uh, the injuries. There's not really much to talk about in this match. Uh, they both ladies worked hard, and Chris Statlander screamed a lot, which was surprising because I didn't realize aliens could scream. So uh, there's that. Uh, Statlander wins with her uh, Big Bang Theory move, and and I give it two out of five stars. Uh, no, nothing really special here, and unfortunate that they had to change the uh, competitors around. The next match was Sean Spears versus Dustin Rhodes. And this thing wasn't even really a match because uh, apparently Dustin got so beat up by Lance Archer the previous week that Spears didn't even come down dressed to wrestle. And he just played it off like Rhodes wasn't going to show up and played the music and kind of trolled us a bit and then Rhodes actually showed up and spent the next five minutes stripping him out of the suit that he was wearing and I saw way more of Sean Spears' ass crack than I ever wanted to see in my lifetime. So yeah, th th this was a dumpster fire and honestly had no business being on a pay-per-view where you're spending $50 to watch. Uh, this this thing gets a half a star out of five. The only reason it doesn't get zero is because they they actually had a wrestling match, be it as a terrible one, it was actually a match. So, yeah. The next match on the card is the women's championship match between Hikaru Shida and Nyla Rose. Uh, this, this match was way above my expectations, and it, it was good from start to finish. It had a, a no disqualification, no countouts uh, ruling to it, so they went all over the arena and took multiple shots through tables and onto through the props that are around there. At one point, Nyla threw uh, Sheeta through a roulette uh, table at which she said always bet on black which was like blow my mind funny because I love Wesley Snipes and Passenger 57 that is a very good movie that you should go see and who knows maybe my neighbor will write that and I will have an opportunity to show you how great that movie is Sheeta was dressed like a Final Fantasy character, apparently. I, I don't know which one, but that's what the internet people were saying. It was a good outfit. And Sheeta went with the surprising victory after bashing Nyla over the head repeatedly with a kendo stick and then running knee blasts multiple times. Sheeta, of course, uh, is known for having a kendo stick, but apparently Nyla stole the kendo stick and brought it to the arena for the match. I give this match 4 out of 5 stars. This was a very good showing, and Sheeta really came on as the deserving champion, having been in countless matches throughout the coronavirus period, while Nyla was off quarantining somewhere. A little surprising that they took the title off of Nyla because she only won it at the previous pay-per-view and it seemed like she had more time to run in her, but maybe she'll come back and get the title somewhere down the line. The next match is the AEW Championship match between Brody Lee and John Moxley. This match seem to have many of the same out of the ring uh, options that the last match had except that this was not 
a no disqualification match like the other ones was. So it was a little surprising they spent this much time brawling outside, but it was still fun and entertaining to watch. Uh, one of the highlights towards the end of the match is Moxley doing a paradigm shift through the stage ramp and they both crawl out of the thing a little bit later and Brody's bleeding on the top of his head and I, I honestly thought he got concussed in that moment because the next part of the finish which happened right after was very awkward where he just kicked out immediately of the finishes a couple times and then Moxley had to choke him out at the end and that just came off as uh, a little botchy, like kicking out at one on something, so uh, that that my viewpoint, I could be entirely wrong about that. Overall, though, it's a three and a half star match, really, really slugfest between the two guys, and um, the right decision was made to keep Moxley with the title because he also recently won the title and basically has been the champion during a pandemic and. It's not really a fair assessment on how he's doing when basically like two weeks after you win the belt, there's no more fans in the arena. The final match of the evening is the Stadium Stampede match between the Elite and the Inner Circle. This is beyond anything I've ever seen in a wrestling match. It, it's not even really a wrestling match, it's just more like a movie that just happened to take place at a football stadium. This thing had so many funny, quirky, insane moments to it, and it ran nearly an hour. The inner circle, who are the heels in the match, are dressed up in a football uniform while the uh, elite are just dressed up in their normal wrestling outfits and and hangman page doesn't even show up at the beginning so they have this running across the field uh thing where they go and start beating the hell out of each other and then hangman page shows up on a horse and he, he chases sammy Guevara into into the uh, arena somewhere uh Sammy comes back and Hangman Page gets lost and eventually finds his way to a bar because, you know, alcoholism. One of the young bucks does a moonsault off of one of the goalposts, even though he has broken ribs. Uh, there's one section where uh, Matt Hardy is fighting a couple of the uh, tag team guys from the inner circle and they're in a pool and he is being drowned and changing identities because he has multiple personalities and so they drown him and he comes back with a different identity and kind of weird to do a drowning angle when a former wrestler this week uh, died in a riptide but, you know, it was it was all in good fun, I think. Uh, one of the Inner Circle guys, Jake Hager, uh, eventually finds Hangman's horse and then goes to the bar. And Hangman pours him a drink and is like, are you here to fight? And, and they eventually start brawling. And his tag team partner, Kenny Omega, shows up and they beat the crap out of... Uh, Hager, and then after they're done, they have a, a drink of uh, whiskey, and Omega, who doesn't drink, just has a, a shot of milk, and a little goofy. <laughs> the Bucks are off fighting uh, Jericho and Guevara, and at one point, uh, Jericho pins uh, one of the Jacksons, and and only gets a two count and he throws a challenge flag and he and he and the ref go into into the booth and have the have the review of everything and, and the pin gets upheld and Jericho's like, You're a shitty referee. 
Matt Jackson does his uh, locomotion northern light suplexes across the entire field, or that's what uh, camera editing wants you to think that he did. And when he uh, scores the touchdown at the end, he, he starts dancing, and the ref throws a flag for uh, excessive celebration, and, and Jackson super kicks him in the head, knocking him out. At one point during the match, Jericho knocks out the Jaguars mascot, and then uh, the, the Bucks take out Jericho by having, uh, I think it was Nick Jackson, he, got, he runs up the stairs in the stands, I think it's a running start, jumps over the railing, and takes Jericho through a table, and then and he's dead, and then um, Page shows up, and he just, with the line marker thing, and he just rolls the machine over uh, Jericho's crotch, and through his head that way, and just kind of walks off scene. Uh, eventually, Sammy wakes up from his uh, Northern Lights suplex coma, and, and then he thinks he's the last one left, and he get, then gets chased down by Omega and Hardy and, and the golf cart again which echoed a segment from Dynamite a few weeks ago, which was utterly hilarious. Uh, this time, though, he gets chased into the stands, and and um, Omega pulls this crazy one-winged angel from, like, 20 feet down to a, to a crash pad, pins, and, and they win the match. Uh, th this thing is just crazy fun. And, and I, I give it five stars out of five. I, yeah, it's not a real wrestling match in the sense of what a wrestling match was. I mean, they had a ring in the middle and they maybe spent like two minutes in the, during the entire thing doing actual like wrestling stuff. But it, it, it was so much fun to watch this thing. I, I can't give it anything less than the highest grade possible. Overall, I have to give uh, AEW Double or Nothing 2020 a B plus grade, and and really the only reason it doesn't get an A minus grade is because of that terrible Dustin Rhodes Sean Spears segment in the middle of the show. That 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 just had no business being there whatsoever. The rest of the matches were average to above average. And, of course, the, the stadium stampede is worth the price of admission alone. I, I, I wonder what main event they would have had had the show actually taken place in Las Vegas. Because there's no way you could have done a match like that at the uh, MGM Grand Garden Arena. It, they, just, they just took a bad situation with the pandemic and created this insane match out of it. I would definitely recommend catching a replay of this thing. This thing was definitely worth the money. So yeah, that, that, that's my review. And uh, if you want to have more wrestling reviews or anything, uh, drop me a line in the comment section because that, that's apparently a thing that you're supposed to be doing. You video watchers, you. Shame. Shame. Anyway, I gotta get back to work on my next video. Ta-ta!